It's Friday, which means it's another episode of Spotting Fakes. And today I'm going to be going over the one and only Charlie Hustle, Pete Rose, 1963 Tops rookie card. Everyone loves Pete Rose, the all-time hit king, a fan favorite. However, is he going to be in the hall? Well, that's up for you up to decide. So put down in the comments down below if you think Pete Rose should be inducted into the Baseball Hall of Fame. Anyways, I'm going to jump on my computer and show you how to spot the fake Rose. Okay, guys, so let's talk about the Pete Rose rookie card and why someone wants to fake it. Actually, this card was one of the first cards that reached the market with a mass production of fakes. Um, back in the 70s, fakes started flooding the market, and Pete Rose was one of the most popular players back then. And a lot of frauders wanted to go out there and make fake Pete Rose. And back then, the card prices aren't like they are today, um, but it was still an expensive card. I mean, it was probably $100 plus in the 70s. And think about where that is today. Now, taking a look at the cards right here in different grades. So I'm using a tool called Market Movers. And if you want this tool, check down the description down below. Use my link in code breakout for 20% off your first month or your purchase of it. It's really worth it, guys. And you can find out why I just by looking at this and I'll, I'll explain. But first, you can see the example of a PSA 8. Uh, they've been ranging sub 20 all the way up to 30. And then they're going right now sub 15. And you look at the PSA 7 on a rose, they've been about 7,500. Um, but this last one over here, this guy got a really good deal at $5,200. I mean, you can see the trend line on this. Uh, they've been going up, 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 up. And then this one went down. So whoever got this at 5,200 did extremely well because you can even look back a few months ago, uh, 5,600 was the cheapest one. So congrats to whoever got that one. But you can see if a 7 selling for 5,200 or $7,500 and 8 selling for, let's say, 20 grand on average, you imagine what a nine or a 10 go for. So when you're buying this card raw, be very careful. If it looks really good shape, um, there's a reason why someone didn't get it graded, whether it's trimmed or whether it's a fake card. And again, this is one of the most fake cards in the hobby. So with that being said, let's take a look at a real example and talk about uh, what it has. So the fakes at first glance look really, really close to a real example, um, but there's a lot of notable differences. So let's start taking a look at the rows. First thing I like looking at is the cap. So there's a lot of different ways to take a look at this cap. Now, a real one is going to have this black line around the C of the Cincinnati logo and then no line around the cap. Fakes, however, have the opposite. So a fake will have a black line around the cap and then no line around the C of the logo. So that is the first thing and the easiest way to tell if one is fake or not. Another thing I like taking a look at is the chipping of a card. So 63s were very, very prone to chipping. And you can see over here in the corners, uh, even this five has a lot of chipping. Now, this is kind of like the 71 set or the 53 set. There's no chipping on them. It's most likely fake and really, really easy to tell with those. So if you've handled any 63s, you'll know how they chip. Just have that in the back of your mind. Now, another thing about this card uh, with Pete Rose is the centering. A lot of these cards were not centered. However, someone that's making a forgery is going to have it centered because they want to get top dollar. So having it off centered is a really, really good sign. Again, check for trimming because that is out there. Um, but you need to look for that. Another thing I've noticed on some of the forgeries is these black lines have a lot more space going to the top. So you can see this isn't perfect. There is a little bit of space, but the forgeries I've been seeing recently have a little more space. So take a look at the black line spacing between over here um, because the fakes have a tend, tend to have a little bit more. Now, if you have a loop as well, you can go over here and take a look at the lettering and all this should be solid. If you start seeing a lot of dots, a lot of pixelation, that is not a good sign um, because that is a low quality print. And that means the card is fake. So look around the card. The only pixels you should be pretty much seeing are the faces over here. These should all be solid lettering. Another thing to take a look at is Pete Rose's face. So the face and the cap again. Uh, the fakes tend to have a tint over the cap or the face. And this tends to be a little bit darker. You can see how this pops right now. So it's a really, really good sign that this card is real. Now flipping the card over to the back. Fakes tend to be a lot lighter on the back. So you want to compare the color of a real one like this and then compare it to a fake one uh, to make sure that the colors line up. And the same with the front as well with this background over here. I've seen some fakes that have darker backgrounds 
or lighter backgrounds, they can't really replicate this color exactly. So comparing the colors is really, really good. And guys, if all else fails, just buy a cheap 1963 card, look at the stock and everything like that and compare it to the real Pete Rose. You, you can find commons for only a few dollars. Finding a Pete Rose is at least a couple hundred dollars, even at a very, very low grade. So just buy yourself a 63 common and compare it before you make that decision. You don't want to be scammed out of hundreds, if not thousands of dollars. Anyways, guys, I hope this video is really, really helpful. If it was, make sure to leave a like and subscribe. I'm still working on my book, Spotting Fakes. I hope to have it out during the summer. And when I do, I will let you guys know. It will be down in the description on every video and I'll be making an announcement on the channel. So let me know what you guys want to see me cover next week in the series, whether it's a hockey card, a football card, or a basketball card. I have a ton of cards already researched and these videos can be made pretty fast. So I'll catch you guys in another video. Thank you.